maybe it would help them help them understand maybe it would help them help them understand maybe it would help them help them understand we want people to understand really what a temple is there's there's a lot of confusion about this many people think that 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 mormon building down on the corner uh, where people go in and out every Sunday is a temple, but really this isn't the truth. Yes, there are thousands of Mormon chapels dotting the landscape, but there are actually very few temples around. The Mormon chapels are have many many meetings uh, all week long, and they're primarily you'd consider them worship type meetings. There's no worship services in the temple. These are dedicated especially for ordinance work. They're closed on Sunday, and Admission when they are open and operating is limited to people who are especially qualified to uh, be able to participate in these secret ordinances. The temples are very beautiful, very ornate, beautifully decorated and furnished. Most temples have uh, visitor centers, genealogical libraries, and clothing stores associated with them, not actually part of the temple. The temples are missionary, involved in missionary work to the dead, and the missionary program is involved in taking the gospel of Joseph Smith to the living. All right. Now, once again, let's, let's clarify. What exactly are temples for? Well, these ordinances that are performed there are called the higher ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood. Mormons commonly refer to this as temple work, and most of the people that are going there are going to act as proxies for a specific dead person to perform these ordinances for them. All right, so who's going into the temple? Just anyone? I mean, as long as you're a member of the Mormon Church, uh, in you go. Well, the, first of all, let's, let's get a point of terminology. The people that go to the temple are referred to as patrons by the temple staff, and we'll try to refer to them that way, too. All right. Actually, about a third of the membership of the Mormon Church have received their endowments, which means that they should be wearing the uh, priesthood undergarment at all times and and with the mas- secret Masonic markings on them that are to protect them from the power of Satan. And that's but, the that's the underwear you receive when you go through the first time to receive your endowments for yourself. That's you can right. Receive your own endowments. Yes, right. but actually, about twenty percent of Mormon of the membership of the Mormon Church actually hold a valid temple recommend at any one time, Uh, which is what qualifies you to enter the temple to participate in these secret ordinances. So remember that most of those ordinances now are for the dead. So statistically, it's a rather elite group. Oh, yes, very much so. So so how do you qualify for a recommend, in a nutshell? Well, very briefly, you have to, uh, first of all, feel that you're worthy. Secondly, you go to your bishop and you have a private, personal interview consisting of about 15 very penetrating questions about your personal worthiness and you have to have a hundred percent score on those questions your bishop signs a recommend he sends you to your stake president where you have an identical private personal interview with identical questions you have to have a hundred percent perfect score with him if he agrees that you're worthy he signs your recommend you take your recommend down to the temple They inspect it, and they stamp it with an expiration date, which is roughly a year from the date that you're taking it. And then after that year, or preferably before that year is over, you go through the interview process all over again. Okay, now, what ceremonies, what rituals are performed in the temples? Exactly. Okay, they're they're called ordinances, so we'll try to stick with that, although ritual and ceremony is probably a more accurate description. And to just enumerate those, they're baptism for the dead, which most people have heard of, then confirmation, which is actually being made a member of the Mormon Church and receiving the Holy Ghost. You mean the, the dead person on whose behalf you are doing this is there is thereby through doing this becoming a member of the Mormon Church? Oh yes, oh yes, Even all as of he these. Is in the spirit world. And and one interesting uh, aspect is that most of the records that are supplying the names of these dead individuals are are Christian church records. Yes. So it's it's really, by and large, dead Christians who are becoming Mormons by this temple, these temple rituals by proxy. Well, you see, Mormons, Theoretically. Mormons believe that uh, 
every dead person who isn't a Mormon is kept in something called the spirit prison. Right. And the only way he can get out of this prison is to have somebody perform these ordinances for and in behalf of him. Then, he, then the missionaries can come to him in the spirit world, and he can accept the Mormon gospel, and then he can get out. Right. Mormon missionaries sort of come over from the paradise region, which is where the good right. Mormons stay. And uh, as you're sitting there in spirit prison, you're confronted with the Mormon gospel, and now do you want to make your decision for Joseph Smith, etc. Let's see. I was enumerating the temple ordinances. I better get back to that. All right. Confirmation for the dead, which is becoming a member of the Mormon church and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then dead males are ordained to the Mormon Holy Melchizedek priesthood. Then the ordinances for the living and the dead become the same. Washing to become clean from the blood and sins of this generation, anointing to become kings and priests unto the Most High God, clothing in the garment of the Holy Priesthood, which is this secret priesthood underwear that we just mentioned. Right. The endowment is almost a two-hour ceremony, and we'll discuss that later. Then sealing to uh, spouse and sealing to parents are also part, and this is the celestial marriage or marriage for time and eternity. Which means, in effect, that the people who are so sealed uh, remain related. Uh, yeah, this is the eternal family that the Mormon missionaries talk so much about. Uh, this is the only way to attain this eternal family s status is to be married or sealed in the temple under the, the authority of that sealing power that they believe they have in the temple. And then to remain faithful. So when they say endure to the end, that is. When they say families are forever, that's a highly conditional statement. Oh yes, very definitely. Uh, and, and it's conditioned upon living daily all of these secret covenants and promises that you take upon yourself when you go through the temple, and that's a very definitely brought across to you that if you don't live all of these ordinance, these covenants that you make, you have no promise. Before we go more into the details of what takes place in the Mormon temple, I think we should again discuss really why why the temple is so important in Mormonism and why it's so important to someone who is joining Mormonism. Well, Paul, the temple is the heart and soul of Mormonism. It It's supposed to be the ultimate experience, the ultimate in spirituality. And, and it's a goal of everyone who is trying to achieve something in the Mormon church. I mean, if he doesn't go to the temple, he hasn't gone to first base. So you join the Mormon church for a lot of different reasons, a lot of emotional reasons. People join the Mormon church because of a promise of a forever marriage or the promise of a restoration to them of children that they have lost, uh, the restoration of an extended family, perhaps, where parents are dead. Uh, there are a great many promises that they tell you can be had in no place else except the Mormon temple. And so from the time you were baptized, that it's your goal. You are worked up to a pitch of expectation that is unbelievable. You keep the word of wisdom, you pay your tithing, you try to keep yourself morally and spiritually fit. Uh, you want to be worthy. You desperately want to be worthy. And when you finally get there and you enter in through those doors and you don't, you're washed and anointed and clothed in the garment of the holy priesthood and you dress in those white clothes to go up to receive your quote endowments unquote you are ready for the ultimate 